Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. How about yourself? we back home. How was Los Angeles? Did it feel like home? Like, what's home now to you after experiencing two weeks back in LA? Yeah, um, it definitely felt like home. Nice. Saw, a lot, saw a lot of familiar faces. Um, ate at the, the spots that I had always... Um, been eating at when I was out there that I don't have out here nice. or either that or it's just so far away it's not worth my time um, so, so that this was trip nice. you made time for shit you probably wouldn't have back in the day yeah I was like nice. I ate this shit six times in a row I'm kind of sick of it but I'm not going to eat it again for another like six months four yeah. months who knows so I just picked out definitely gained a little weight that I got to burn off these next couple weeks <laughs> maybe not this weekend because it's July 4th but um yeah, it was super nice. I definitely partied way more than I anticipated and probably should have. Mm. Um, I think I saw the sun going to bed like four times. That's that wild, dude, because that's really <laughs> not your MO at all. I don't have no. either of our MOs. Like, that's, that's awesome. Bro. No. What it was is Danny, who, like, you saw in, like, three of my videos, he, yeah. um, he happened to be free, like, every time I was trying to go out. So he showed me a couple after-hour spots. It's typical... It's like a typical bar. It's just open past the two a.m. Yeah, open curfew. till mad late. So yeah. there's no um, but so they have a liquor license like four or five in the morning. That I'm not sure. I feel like it's an underground thing. Okay. Um, because I've been never never heard about these spots until before. Um, but uh, I imagine they only have a license till two a.m. and they just risk it or something. Who knows? <laughs> like fuck it. Um. <laughs> Or maybe it's a don't ask, don't tell thing with the cops and they pay them off. Who knows? But um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I think towards the end, I kind of just missed having my own space because sure. I was in my mom's basement and then I was at my dad's spot, which is uh, totally fine. It's not like they're in my business, but, um, you know, my dad has like a couple people. He's renting out a couple of rooms, too. Hmm. And then my mom's place, she has two big ass dogs who were just like barking and running around oh, that's and everything. A, a relatively in the last three or four years thing though right yeah yeah so okay. they weren't there when when you were there yeah because um, i feel like i would have been shook coming yeah, in yeah. whenever i <laughs> no these dogs are the funny thing is they're so big and like intimidating looking but, but they're, they're the biggest pussies ever yeah like yeah, i yeah. swear like i try to pet one of them and he just runs for his life like as if i got a, a like gun in my hand and i abused the shit out of him or something that's crazy that's crazy um, all right but but yeah, I mean, it was obviously nice to see family, but also happy to be back in my, like, regular yeah, space. Yeah, in your, in your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Dude, but yeah, yeah, definitely going home for that extensive period of time is amazing. I'm looking forward to it, God willing. I'm doing the same thing in August in New York. But um, yeah, dude, besides that, I've been good, man. Just taking it easy. Um, dude, work is just wrapping up. Uh, I'm going to Italy a week from tomorrow. We're recording this on June 29th, so July 7th. Uh, God willing, me and Gina will be on a flight with the rest of the family. So, yeah, bro, honestly, just, like, it's that awkward thing where, like, it's a super exciting trip and it's so close, mm -hmm. but, like, it's not tomorrow. So you're like, all right, let me just fucking, like, oh, it's yeah, going to yeah. be here soon. Um, right. But, yeah, dude, that's going to be 10 nights in Italy, like, we're doing from... From Rome up to the up to Milan, so from you know central Italy all the way up to the, to the north, mm -hmm. and then yeah, dude, I'm I'm super excited about it, dude. It'll be super sentimental. Like uh, me and my mom went when I was like 16 together for like seven days too. So like, I'm, it's gonna be nice to be able to be like, oh, I did this with my mom, and now I'm back here with my aunt yeah. and my girl. So I'm excited about that. Uh, you guys might have that wedding you're going to in September. Where is that gonna be at? It's in Lake Como. I don't know I like you. what that's near. But it's um yeah it's not too far from from venice uh okay. we were thinking about going there but for what my aunt wanted to do it wasn't conducive to like right. the like the environment she wanted to be in. but for i heard sure. you know, i've heard nothing but like the the catamarans or the boat tours or the boat that like, i heard that's just only a vibe but yeah. she wanted more like of a nightlife kind of a thing for sure no that's that's fair yeah it didn't seem like it seemed like a more um I don't know, like coupley laid back type vibe. Yeah, coupley and, and like almost like in the most positive way, like the retirees of like Europe go there. Like mm -hmm. laid back living, everything is beautiful, scenic as fuck. 
You yeah. just want to be on your boat all day doing nothing. Whereas, like, my aunt's turning 45. She's like, all right, that's cute for, like, a day. Yeah. A party. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to try to balance it out with, um, like, fly somewhere nearby that has more of the the younger, sure. like, fun vibe. I don't, someone from work told me about uh, Mallorca in Spain. Had okay. never heard of it. It looked fun. It was. It's oh, Mallorca's like a, a vibe, little... dude. Oh, you you know you're familiar with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar okay. with Mallorca. Mallorca is like almost like the distant cousin, party wise, of like Ibiza. Oh wow, okay. Like people fly into Mallorca for like the day parties, the days like all that kind of shit. Nice. Yeah, so we're. So I didn't realize it was that, that close to uh, mm-hmm. to that part of Italy. That's pretty dope. No, didn't realize it either. I didn't even know Spain. I mean, Italy was that close to Spain in general. Um, yeah, but honestly, it's probably the equivalent of like. LA and San Fran. Like, yeah. like, if I could fly to right. That's what's trippy about Europe is like you can really turn this shit into like a world tour for cheap. Like if you're staying in that Bro, region of facts. the world. Like when me and my boy went on a, on a our European t- like European tour, when we went on our uh, Euro <laughs> trip four years uh-huh. ago, like exactly four years ago, we were always like price conscious again. We're like, we want to do a lot. But if he's like, bro, as long as we can fly into anywhere in Europe for cheap. The rest is easy, bro. Like, yeah. dude, we're getting... So we were going to rent a car, but because of gas prices and the low supply of cars, like, it didn't make sense. But, dude, from Rome to get all the way up to Milan, stopping in five different cities along the way, for one person, all the, those four different train rides only cost 120 euros. Damn. Dude, that's phenomenal. <laughs> like, that's yeah. phenomenal. Right. Like, and no train ride is more than three hours. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, bro, like it's, yeah. So yeah, yeah, for real, dude. Like if you have time, yeah, definitely do other, do other countries if you can. For sure. I know I was, I was on TikTok. TikTok's like the best too when, when it comes to like getting the real uh, yeah. lowdown on places. And some chick who said she was, I think she was in Spain or some other country, but she's like, started off the video saying, yeah, so I bought a flight to Mallorca from X place in Europe. And it, she said it was 10 euros. Yeah, which just, you know, this is like the best time, which probably will still be the way when you go. The exchange rate, when I last checked last week, was for every one euro is one dollar and two cents. Wow. Bro, it's never been that great. So right. I'm like, thank God. Dude. I remember like, not to bring up uh, an ex, I used to have an ex who's living in London. Uh-huh. When I was in college back in like 08, 09, yo, when I used to visit her, I would save up a thousand dollars, bro. Mm-hmm. And then because the pound was still so much more than yeah. the euro, bro, that was only five hundred and twenty-five dollars. That of my money, I was like, and London's already like the most expensive right, city yeah, in the world. I'm too. like, bro, I'm broke. Like, I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, that's shit. Yeah, right. so this is definitely the time to go to Europe, bro. So we'll definitely ball out. How? Um, obviously you have a wedding if you go but how long is the overall trip going to be for you though um, I think the wedding itself uh, is like the festivities at least all last like maybe four days in total oh damn is it Indian wedding it's not Indian wedding but this motherfucker is rich as shit so yeah. he's nice. doing like a cruise thing brunch here dinner here this that so we're like might as well attend all of it and then yeah for sure we're gonna go whatever we do if it's Mallorca or not. Uh, we'll probably do another three or four days, so nice. About a week. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're gonna leave the the, the states, it, it yeah. should be a, it should be a week. Like you mm-hmm. guys were in San Miguel for almost like a week and a half, right? Um, San Miguel, I think it was. No, it was only like five days. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, bro. But yeah, good times ahead. Excited for that. Um, but yeah, bro, let's get into the fucking pod. Uh. Our last pod, just a heads up to everyone, uh, housekeeping, uh, we'll be gone for two weeks while I'm in Europe, fucking, maybe I'll come back, I'll bring the microphone just in case, but uh, <laughs> I should be back in two weeks, so uh, definitely jump into previous episodes and uh, obviously like, share, uh, but we'll be back soon. But yeah, but before that, great episode today, my guy, so let's start off bro, with, with some pretty fucking wild news when it popped up. Um, I was shocked by it, but when I was talking to my boys from New York, they were Little TJ getting shot. I I think he's as of this podcast still unconscious, but they say stable condition. Like yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah. too sure. I think stable condition, but unfortunately, that, that just basically means he's alive, and I don't think it means much more than that. Like alive and likely to survive. I think that's mm. kind of the best way to. Uh, 
define what stable condition is in this case. Gotcha. There's rumors he was paralyzed. I don't think that was ever confirmed. Probably a rumor. But yeah, it's scary because I've I've different. been unable to find any news on him like yeah. being okay, like officially. Yeah, and that's like the sick thing about like the internet. Like this shit like happened. I think I want to say like last Thursday, and then like almost like two days later, like it's off the news cycle. It's mm-hmm. like whatever's next, right? So yeah, um, yeah. Your thoughts when uh, I think I maybe I shared that with you, or uh, when you came across the information? I was shocked um, for sure. I think in part because I never really like saw him as like this savage goon or anything that was like yeah just out in the streets doing shit. Um, obviously like up there in terms of popularity so that was another factor like i kind of expect this stuff to happen to dudes who like barely made it they're still kind of in the hood um before they they're able to make a way out or whatever so i think all that combined just made me sad and confused like how this happened granted i know a lot of these guys kind of uh gonna be can be a bit careless in how they move if they don't feel like their life is in danger right um, well, yeah, it's sad and it, it, I feel like it's becoming a, a cycle that we're maybe be, not totally becoming desensitized to, but like, I feel like every five episodes we're talking about somebody. Yeah. So like, yeah, dude. And that's, and that's, we're talking about people who are actually somebodies. Yeah. Cause we could be doing this shit every episode, to be honest. Right. Like, there's a ton <laughs> of people that have been shot recently. We're just like, bro, like. I don't know enough. I don't even know who this person is. I see that they're kind of famous, but like, yeah, it's not going to resonate with enough people to even talk about it, which is the, you know, the sad thing. But yeah, yeah, same to you, bro. Like, I, 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 I was shocked more so by the name. Um, I was like, damn, this dude really got shot. Like, what the fuck? He just had a fucking you know banger last summer with you know J Cole and and Boz. Like, he seems like one of the most popular you know people fuck with him. Like, how would this happen, bro? But then just like asking more people in New York, like, dude, my boy had a couple comments was like. I'm not surprised. We're actually surprised it took this long. I'm like, what the Damn, fuck? Like, what kind yeah, of inside dude. information? Yeah, is that? yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? It was more so like, I guess he has beef with a bunch of people, like in the Bronx, um, and they, you know, they're claiming that it's like gang on gang, you know, fucking just like that. This was coming due over time. But what's weird, bro, is that like, it kind of makes sense in an odd way because like, bro, he, anytime you see him, he is posted up in like some New York city street doing something. Mm-hmm. Right. And then at some point, fam, if you have all that jewelry on you and people know you've made it to a certain extent, dude, that is only going to antagonize people who don't have that and already don't fuck with you. Cause you claim to rep another set than they do. Right. So like that and super fucking depressing. And like, you know, hope this dude recovers and his family can have him by his side, by their side for years to come. But then at some point, you're also like, bro, like, no one asked for this, but fuck, dude, you're kind of like putting yourself in a really bad predicament by like just being available. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is the sad thing. We always say this, bro, like, people showing love to the hood, but fam, I was making a joke, like, yo, if I was from the Bronx, well, I am from the Bronx, but if I was a <laughs> rapper from the Bronx uh-huh. and I fucking made it, bro, I'm going to Dubai. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm leaving, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going where, like, this shit is never occurring. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I'm loved from afar. I show love. But, bro, I'm not putting myself at risk because I need to pretend to be down with some shit. Yeah. And and what's scary, too, is uh, this particular thing didn't even happen in the hood. It happened in, like, the Beverly Hills of New Jersey, I heard, essentially. Uh, Yeah, Edgewater. Edgewater. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it just goes to show, like, these dudes really are targets. Um, but the thing, dude, like, if you're in way. Edgewater, bro, I can get from the Bronx to Edgewater in 35 minutes. So, like, that's the other True. part. Like, if you're, if people really don't fuck with you in nearby cities or states, yeah. like, I can get to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if you're posting shit, like, which they are not, like, I can get to you, which is, again, right. is scary, but that's also the risk you take if you want to just keep yourself, like, in the spotlight yeah. with shit. I mean, I don't, I don't have a way to verify this, but I feel like in the past, like goons were kind of afraid to do shit in luxurious neighborhoods. Oh no, I feel like Whereas since that pop now, smoke shit, it was just like, yeah. bro, it's all fucking like. Because mm-hmm. like, if, like people are robbing people in Beverly Hills now, and uh, growing up, I don't think that would have ever really taken place. Because I, I remember thinking to myself, like, if you're a goon who's broke 
why don't why not go to the rich neighborhood and fuck with the dude with the Lambo mm-hmm. instead of the old lady on the block or whatever it is. Right. And now I feel like people are thinking that that's way. what's happening. Yeah. They're like, I'm gonna go get this rolly from this fucking white dude walking minding his business or whoever. Yeah. Whereas before it was I do like had, I had this I had the same exact mentality. Obviously not in Beverly Hills. Um I didn't grow up in L- uh in California, but when I moved to Charlotte and I really know areas, so I moved to like the downtown slash uptown area of Charlotte, which is you know, upper middle class, you know, what like good do people doing well. But there was like a very poor town, like I can see it from my balcony, like right there. Uh-huh. And then people were like, people from Charlotte, like, bro, don't worry about it, dude. They stay over there, we're here, and it's, there's a rule. And now it's like, yo, those rules are gone, bro. Like, I don't want, like, if, I feel like the, what's happening right now is like, yo, like, if I can get on from my own means, I'm going to take your shit. Yeah. And if that means killing you, hurting you, whatever, like, that's what's going to happen, bro. So, mm-hmm. but again, I feel like from what I've, from just what trying to fucking read the tea leaves and asking people, like, in New York, like, I feel like this was definitely gang related, though. Oh, yeah. And yeah. just like he just made himself too available. Mm-hmm. If people wanted to hurt him, like they were going to find him. Yeah. And I, I think that kind of goes to your point of if people can get to you and they have a reason, like it's not like this guy was just lurking around Chipotle for fun. Right. Sounds like <laughs> they're like, yo, he's over here. I don't give a fuck if it's in a uh, affluent neighborhood. Like you can get yeah. there in 30 minutes, fuck him up, get out of there, whatever. Um, but I feel like people need to, these rappers need to take a page out of Chief Keef's book and like, cause he's been in Beverly Hills for, I don't know how long, ever since he blew up. And I think he's like in a soup. He must be in a very private, secluded, gated area. Obviously if people really wanted to, I guess they could, but none of the dudes from Chicago are making that road trip or, or whatever to get to him. I don't think so. Yeah. You know what's odd? That the only time we ever heard of him like scuffling with anyone that's serious was like the six nine. Six nine, yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious. Like the dude who's the opposite of yeah. what you would imagine would be his rival. Like almost got him. And dude, the sad thing I haven't seen the videos in like academics and shit, but like, um, do people keep bumping into six nine like at grocery stores and like? Mm-hmm. You can tell he's like strapped the whole time because his yeah, hand yeah. stays here. The, the fanny pack or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's still fun. Like, I, I think people who actually hate him are like, bro, like, we don't care. Like, just like, mm-hmm. if we give you attention, it's only going to help you. And like, yeah. we don't care. It's so ironic because it's almost like he's uh, too easy of a punching bag. Mm-hmm. But then again, I, I wonder if some people are still crazy enough to want the, the, uh, those stripes. Of yeah. fucking with him. But then I wonder also, like, if there are people still around him, like security. Oh, I feel like they're definitely lurking. You know what I mean? Like, people, him. like, we're, we're catching him in these images for, like, 10 seconds alone. But mm-hmm. there might be three security guards at the door not letting yeah. you get inside. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, I don't know how he has his money still. Because I don't know. But yeah. yeah, I don't. I, I can't imagine my dude like literally just walking up and down the streets by himself. No, I know he talks a lot of shit, but I think he's smart behind the scenes and knows he can get fucked up, and he's just doing it for the gram and pretending like yeah, you know, security's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd rather have someone troll him, but like kind of him set up like the parameters when it can happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But uh, again, shout out to little TJ and his crew. Hopefully, again, he can make a recovery. Uh, you know, obviously, great artist and also just a super young dude. Like to have him pass away would be fucking tragic. And again, and add to the only tragic list that we already have this year, let alone in hip hop in general. Um, dude, but you know what's funny? You were talking about getting the skinny from like TikTok has like a lot of information. You're talking about the Italy stuff, bro. Like I fucking since I've started like editing more stuff for our TikTok. Bro, I'm on that shit way too much. I know. I was like, I noticed you started sending me more shit. I'm like, all right, he's on. Yeah, because usually, now. like, so this guys know, <laughs> give you guys more behind the scenes. So Blair would send me some shit, and I would have responded for like a week and a half because, like, I don't have, like, I gotta, I'm just never on that shit. And now I'm just like, like, it's good, dude. Like, it's, it's good. Addicting. Like, it's, it's addicting, bro. And also, like, it's instant, right? Because I feel like even like, no, but Instagram. Like it almost takes a while for like to, for that shit to really give you something you actually want to watch in your own timeline. Whereas mm-hmm. like it feels like TikTok. You tell me if you feel like the same way. Like after a while, the algorithm's like, all right, here, 
here, you like this. You, I'm like, yo, how do you know, bro? Yeah, like, it's scary. Like, it's so accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or I'm like, do I like everything? Like, I don't or, understand. Yeah, like, that might be the case. Because I see a lot of random, I'm sure you get a lot of random funny shit that, like, you wouldn't necessarily think to look for. But it somehow, like, is funny to you no matter what it is. Yeah, and then the funny thing is, like, also, like, I thought, like, if I didn't like it, it wouldn't know. But I guess there's, like, a thing, like, if they see you stay on one page for mm-hmm. more than, like, a minute or something, it yeah. keeps resetting to you, even if you didn't follow or like it. I'm like, fuck, mm-hmm. dude. Like, I'm not trying yeah. to see this shit not on top of my timeline. But, yeah, it's funny how, like, when people like you or, like, any, like, uh, I think some, like, famous investor was talking about how, like, TikTok really is going to be, like, the biggest thing in, like, a year or two. Like, I believe it now. Because, like, mm-hmm. bro, like... But you know what's also like sad, bro, is that like all these again, these these people are making bank on TikTok, like so good for them. Like it's not sad, but what's odd, especially as an introvert, like when they pretend to be like alone, like the person who's like the main character, uh-huh. right, pretends to be alone, starts crying by themselves in a car. I'm just like, why are you posting this, bro? Yeah, because like in my mind, I'm like, if I have a breakdown moment, I'm not just grabbing my phone like, oh, hold on one second. And then get back to my crying. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, how does that work? Yo. <laughs> so funny. that's been like a thing. Like I always like go back and forth with my girl. I'm like, yo, like I get it. This is good content, but mm-hmm. it's not real. Bro. Like yeah. the one with a nigga running just by uh-huh. himself, like with inspiration. I'm like, who's filming him? Yeah. Like why is <laughs> filming this? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious that you mentioned that. Cause my girl literally was complaining about that last night. And then a week ago, um, because of the Roe versus Wade thing, a lot of people had been talking about it. And and my boy Moon, who you know as well, mm-hmm. was like, all right, this is cool, but like, why are you crying and then post recording yourself and then posting it? Like, this is just so weird. So weird, bro. We live in a weird time, dog. We live in a weird time, but a very fucking weird time. So uh, that might be a good segue to the Roe versus uh, the Wade thing. So you may have more content than I do. Um, if you want to share just obviously what happened and we can just share... Uh, my reactions to it. Yeah, I mean, Roe versus Wade um, essentially was... Has been in place since, I want to say, the 70s? Yeah, long ass time. I think right. since the 70s. Um, and it basically gave women the right to a an abortion um, that has since been overturned by the Supreme Court, which means, I believe, states now have... Have the, the right. Have the right to essentially ban it. So it's not like you can't go to another state necessarily to do it, but obviously not everyone has that luxury. Yeah, um, has the means. Has, yeah, has yeah. the means. It really is a financial thing because if, mm-hmm. if you have the finances, if I have to hop on a flight to like get fucking a procedure done, I can afford right. it. It's like if you don't have, yes, yeah, so it really is a, mm-hmm. it's targeting a very specific demographic, unfortunately. Right. And even if you do have the means, like I'm sure these women are pissed off that yeah. something they feel like should be a basic right is being denied or can be denied right so for obvious reasons this has pissed off a lot of the country uh we feel like we're going backwards we feel like we're prioritizing guns and things that may arguably not be as necessary to survive so and it just sucks that those things happen like again it sucks that they happen but the fact that those rulings came back like in back-to-back weeks Mm -hmm. is crazy dog and i think they're trying to ban same-sex marriage so basically like everything that we've fought hard to protect yep um and get implemented is seems to be being reversed yeah yeah that's what it feels like and it feels like um we're going backwards in a weird mm-hmm. way like we're in 2022 and it seems like our children are going to have to do with like what our great great parents were like fighting for back in the 70s yeah. or the 60s and 70s mm-hmm. it's like how the fuck did we get here you know what i mean like yeah so that's like the scary part, bro. Like, like I, I don't get how like I think it's like six Supreme Court people, or I don't know if it's ten, or maybe six voted for the reversal. But I don't know how ten sensible people can get in a room and say, "Let's overturn this." Right. Like that's the part that just like, yo, like I'm dumbfounded, fam. Like how, mm-hmm. like dude, like again, like and there's women in that room who voted right. for this. Mm-hmm. So it's like you would be okay, like God forbid, if you were raped or something yeah. that, like, if you needed to take care of something because you chose to it. Now, like, you're like you're going to jail because of this. 
Mm -hmm. Like that's that's crazy. I mean, I've heard. I know obviously there's like a religious component, and then some people just think it's downright wrong, regardless of religion. There's even conspiracy theories that uh, it's because the white population's decreasing, and they they want to basically prevent white people from uh, aborting their babies so that the race isn't like uh, eradicated, which is insane. I don't that's I don't know if I would believe that, but. That's insane. And even like the idea of that theory is also ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I feel like your relation just what it is. Like, let it be. You right. know what I mean? Not like, hey, like, I feel like if you start controlling one, like that literally becomes like Hitler-ish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so that's fucking scary, dude. We're in 2022. And like, this is a thing that we're going to have to deal with, bro. Like, God forbid, like, you know, I mean, I guess we're both in like serious relationships, but like, what if it wasn't that case? You know what I mean? And you yeah. had, you and your girl had to make a decision. Like, why would you have to hop on a flight to make that? Po I don't know. Right. It's just, it's just crazy. I think the biggest thing for me is, I don't know, the, the older we've become, and the more that I've, like, we've considered parenting or not parenting or whatever the case is, I realize that there's, I don't know, there's a lot of people out there who should not be having kids who do have kids. Yeah. Um, and I think what people who are pro-life are forgetting is that um, that child's life is going to be severely impacted if it grows up in a shitty situation. I doubt that these people are, you know, big supporters of like welfare and, right. you know, the, providing more funding to schools and all this shit that would make a child's life better. better. Yeah. There's kids who are you know, literally need foster care or whatever the case. I highly doubt they don't give a fuck about those kids. So I'm like, okay, you want this person who is trying to choose not to have a kid to have one. But once the child's here, you don't want to do anything to ensure it has a good life and doesn't become like uh, a bad person, quote unquote, within society. That just seems backwards to me. Like there's way too many people having kids that shouldn't be. And if the person saying, hey, I do not want to be a parent, then let them not be a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're saying that, yeah, we'll have the child, but like, give it up to foster care. Dude, the foster care in America, foster care in general is trash. Mm -hmm. Like trash. Like that probably breeds more resentment and, and puts more criminals on the street once they get older because they don't know any better. Right. So, yeah, dude, that's that's wild, man. So it's funny. That it, as we get older, I mean, we can share this, I guess, here, but like, for me, like, I would have thought I would have different reasons why I debate about, like, bringing a child into this world. I thought it would be solely financial. Like, mm -hmm. solely financial. Like, hey, I don't have the means. I can't do it, right? As opposed to, like, now, I'm like, why would I want to bring a kid into this world? Yeah. Like, and that's fucking sad, dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, I know it's a, a funny meme, but I think it's serious. It's like, I'm tired of living in like unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like when our when our parents had us, like, all right, dude, like, yeah, shit was crazy at times, but for the most part, like, yo, my child's gonna go to school, come back, you know, everything's gonna be fine. If, if they do well in school, they have blah 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 blah. Like, dude, for us, it's like, yo, we have kids. If we had kids right now, I'd be terrified every fucking day once they hit four years old. Yeah what next law is going to be passed to make my child's life a fucking living hell. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, dude, it's just like, yeah, dude, it's just scary dog. I feel like it's scary for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. And I actually, ha my wife and I, uh, have had this conversation. I mean, ever since I was like 20, I went back and forth. Cause, but back then to your point, finances was the thing. Cause I was like, shit, I can barely take care of half of myself, let alone a kid. But now, now that I'm older and have, money to take care of myself and potentially someone else um we've basically thought about all of the other things like you said like is it is this world something we'd want to introduce to the child um i feel like a lot of people based on our recent research tend to bring children in out of either boredom or pressure from other people society yeah 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 society. Oh, you're 34 you're, yeah. you're uh, your ovaries you're gonna rot have a mm -hmm. baby now it's just like Dude, or like all my place. friends got kids yeah, yeah so if yeah. i don't i'm like a fuck up yeah but which dude imagine having a child because of fomo 
No. And Dog, I think that's, that's, un, that's selfish for the kid, too. Like, Dude, you don't think that child's going to feel that resentment in your womb? You're yeah. just like, you're, a mom is just pissed? Like, right. pissed, bro? Like, come Right. On. And I'm not saying that kids are bad or that, you know, I would never absolutely ever have one. But uh, someone I saw on YouTube actually said the reason he wasn't was because he he basically approached it from a, a standpoint of, you know, would you recommend life to a, an unconscious being that would potentially want to come here? Mm. And he said to himself, he leaned towards no, even though he re- evaluated and reviewed life as like a seven out of 10. He was like, in his opinion, he didn't think it was good enough of an experience to be like, you absolutely have to do it. Obviously, it depends on how good your life experience is, but it made me wonder like, okay, I like what I experienced, but is the the struggle or pain or whatever the direction we're going in something I would 100% feel confident this new being yeah. would, wouldn't resent me for bringing them into yeah, dude, that's a fair fucking point. But I feel like the not devil's advocate because I don't think it's the opposing view. But where I struggle, and I think even Elon, I think maybe we can talk about this on the pod, but I think Elon mentioned this like, dude, if we don't have kids, if everyone has that mindset, the world is over. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. like, also, I mean, I guess the world's not over because we saw with the pandemic, if we just go away, the world thrives. So it's maybe a good thing. But like, yeah, dude, if we don't make kids, like the like, mankind is over. So yeah. that part almost make me makes me feel like you have a fucking debt to the world mm-hmm. to make a child, at least right. one, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And like, I know people know there's plenty of kids in, you know, orphanage, just, you know, but yeah, dude, but like, I would have to raise them to then have a child because this will end so yeah. like i feel like that's also my conundrum bro like again, mm-hmm. I, again I i'm what if if and when i ever get married i'm gonna try to have kids i, I want to be a dad like i want to have that feeling yeah but i also have had that though when i'm going back and forth like bro like yeah if you don't have fucking kids like so what the earth is just over in 75 years because everyone had this thought in their 20s and 30s in 2022 like that's also fucking crazy right especially if you feel like you're a person who's capable of being a good parent like, right Part of you is like, well, th- these fucking parents are awful. There's a lot of bad examples of parents. So, like, I got to do my duty to be at least one of the good ones to bring Right. This so, I can then, my, when my son or daughter has a child, they can be a good parent and yeah. I can, you know, break the cycle. And that's, you know, the, the, the spark that changes the world. Like, it sounds corny, but like, that's really what it is. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you're doing as a parent. Like, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. But back to the, again, the the Supreme Court ruling. Like it's again, it's it's terrifying. Um, so, what do you think the fallout's going to be from like a political standpoint? Like, do you think like this is the change that like we need to finally properly put the right people in office to make these decisions? Because right? these Supreme Court judges were placed there by mm-hmm. someone. You yeah. know, what I mean, either the lack of voting or the a full throttle voting is why they're there. So, like. What do you think the fallout from this is going to be? I think so. I mean, not that I wish death on any of them, but I'm, I'm hoping that with this cycle of the next generation, like these old timers won't be making these crazy ass decisions. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hoping stuff like this will trigger us to take voting more seriously. Um, I think half the time, like Americans are so ignorant, including myself half the time, um, in who makes these sorts of decisions. Yeah. Like when I was little, I thought the president literally could just say anything at any point and like it was law. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, this the president's basically a puppet that just regurgitates shit. Puppet is um, fucked, especially right now. Mm-hmm. Especially right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, th- we just need to educate people more on how we can prevent stuff like this happening because it's it's pretty sad and there's gonna be a lot of women who are gonna like be using coat hangers and shit to do these abortions themselves yeah it's obviously dude. disgusting uh so yeah i saw yeah, a sign it's... that was pretty telling it said this only bans legal abortions or prevents legal abortions right right 
Yeah, dude, it's that. Like one of uh, my girl's best friends is, is uh, just started her residency to be an OBGYN. And like, she's like devastated, right? Because now she's going to have to, depending on what state she decides to practice in, will like the advice she is going to give a patient may not be in line with what her moral compass is. Yeah. But she's going to be, hey, this in the state law is, that's, dude, that's terrifying, bro. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, you have a, a young parent or whoever, but like, say it is a young parent, potential parent, and you have to give them advice. And you're like, well, this is what I would recommend to do. But because you live here, this is not a viable option. Like, that shit is just messy, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but we'll see where it goes. Hopefully it's not kind of like, I mean, you would think, for instance, with the shootings, these two shootings that took place at elementary schools, the Texas one and the other one, I forget, you would think that would have changed gun no. laws in some you way. You would have thought this shit would have changed when I when we were kids and this shit happened at um uh what's it bowling? Not bowling. Is it Colorado? Uh but you remember that that, that first mass shooting? Like yeah, you know, I was I like think in it third was in grade. Colorado. I think yeah. it was. Ball uh Columbine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Columbine. Columbine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. We were kids, bro. These two dudes walked into a fucking elementary school, just fucking lit everyone up. You would think something would have happened then, dude. I think we've had thousands of uh, mass shootings since then involving children, bro. Like, these motherfuckers don't give a fuck, Mm -hmm. bro, because they're not going to put those gun laws in place because those are the people who give them the most money. Like, it's just, it's sad, bro. So I really, again, it's sad, but it's going to be this, to to bring it back, it's going to be this TikTok generation that says, yo, we're over it, fam. Mm -hmm. And now we have all the information in the world, world. we're going to flood you with it, and we're going to see it change, so... It's scary to think it's on dudes who like to record themselves crying to change the world, <laughs> but that's really who it's on, dude, because it's, it's going to be on them. Yeah, for sure. Um, fingers crossed. It's going to take a minute to get there, but hopefully we don't go too far backwards to the point where the TikTok generation is just bringing us back to where we were, you know, t- five years ago or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's going to have to be like, if this is one step back, we have mm-hmm. to hopefully be able to take like three or four steps forward and shit. So, yeah. Um, again, shout out to everyone affected by this. Uh, and again, hopefully, uh, you know, praying for better days. But uh, we'll make a nice little pivot to some music stuff before we get out of here. Um, bro, I was shocked by this, man. So the fact that Chris Brown is going to sell less on an album than... Little Dirk on a deluxe version of a previous album. Like, yo, what is happening in this fucking world, bro? Like, yeah. I don't get it, dude. I don't, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like it's, I mean, I'm just judging this based on Drake and Post Malone and Kendrick. I feel like all these established guys are like, at this point, just fuck it. Like, when it drops, it drops. I might do it. Oh, dude, yeah. I didn't teaser. even know the Chris Brown show was dropping until Friday morning. Same. And that's the only uh, conclusion I can come to is like the goats are basically like, all right, I'm done. Here's the shit. Maybe do a couple teasers, but I'm not doing a rollout. But like the Dirks and stuff, these guys are doing, seems like anything they can to like to get, get on. their numbers up yeah, and yeah, be yeah. on top. Yeah. I mean, that was surprising me, dude, as, as well. But let's just, I mean, let's just talk about the Chris Brown album. So your thoughts on the album itself. So at first, uh, when I was listening, I was excited as I always am. He's my f- favorite R&B artist for sure. Nice. Um, I was nervous just because I think it was Indigo or the last one. I'm like, there was, I don't know, 452 songs in the album. And I had to go through all of them to find the gems. Yeah. Uh, this one wasn't quite as long, but I'd say like uh, after a few songs into it, I was uh, really feeling it. Towards the end, um, some of the the slower, like, bed, or not bed-making, baby-making music. Baby-making, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bed-making music would be, like, the the Drake house shit, like, <laughs> cleaning the house and stuff. Baby-making music, um, I don't know, I'm not, like, too fond of the super slow stuff. I like more up-tempo R&B, right. but I think when I was done, I, I, I only walked away with a, a couple songs I, I really liked, and then I listened to it again because... I have a habit of making, um, forming an opinion too early. Rash decisions. Yeah. But I definitely love more. I liked it the second time more than the first. Um, oh, that's a good sign. Yeah. I don't know. With him, 
he's one of those artists where I'm like, I've never heard a song for him where I'm like, oh, this is absolute garbage. Like how this make the album. Sure. It's more so like, oh, this is like mid for me. But when he does deliver on a song, it's like my favorite song uh, forever. Yeah, like that, dude, that song with him and uh, with Young Thug go crazy. Mm-hmm. The, the yeah, song like with him like and Drake, like the out of nowhere. You're like, holy mm-hmm. shit, this is like a timeless song. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's a good word. Timeless. Um, so that's all I can ask for really is is good, timeless music. Um, I don't know if I can ever expect him to f- fully deliver on every song, but I guess that would be my only critique. You know, I'd rather have like 10 songs I'm absolutely yeah. in love with than 25 and then choose. Dude, because that was my comment to you when you it dropped. Like I was going to play it first thing Friday morning at the gym. Then I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't have time for 24 songs right now. Like I just... Yeah. I rolled my eyes. I was like, bro, we're, we're still doing this. Um, <laughs> but like, okay, so like, is it fair then? Again, I guess if we were younger, like if we were like your dad's, our, our parents' age, when like Michael was Michael, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. I feel like when I was listening to Thriller, even when I was a kid, like we weren't skipping songs like this, bro. No. You know what I mean? Like that's the only time I, like this is the only time I push back with like moments like this. Like I get like the comparisons to him and Michael on a massive scale. Like, he's clearly the best of his time right now. So that's a fair comparison to Michael. Mm-hmm. The dancing's ridiculous, right? The pop influence is phenomenal. But when we just get down to the music of it, I feel there's too many times I'm with him like, all right, like like you said, it's not bad. But bro, it's not GOAT-worthy conversation. No. Which is what just, I always like when they make those compare. I know he pushes back. But I think that's more like a humbleness. Like, hey, I don't want to brag about myself. Like, you can do it if you want. But mm-hmm. when other people are saying, I'm like, bro, like, there's no fucking way, dude. Like, we weren't listening to an, a Michael album and just going, all right, next, 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 next. Oh, this is yeah. a banger. Okay, next. Like, dude, there it wasn't that, dude. So that's my only pushback, right? I don't, I don't know if you feel so. Yeah. I, I feel like it's an easy comparison just because he's phenomenal, like, the best dancer singer combo um that we've ever had yeah that i mean maybe like had. usher has a yeah, right usher i think yeah. yeah 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 but at least the last 10 years has been only chris brown yeah but i know i agree with you like i didn't i don't think his music has that like universal appeal i even saw him at rolling loud and i didn't feel that uh oh you said you weren't blown away at all right no i didn't have that like oh my god goat energy yeah. type feel which ironically i kind of had when i saw kanye uh, the oh, second nice. time. Like, I don't Kanye's catalog really. Like, Dog. And if he's in a good mind. mood to do it, uh-huh. bro, keep going. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't think Chris Brown's music compares to Mike's in terms of GOAT uh, status. I think what me, people are most impressed with is Chris Brown's so talented in other areas that maybe Michael Jackson isn't. Like, he's a, like, a, phenomenal artists like like drawing artists oh right artists. i didn't even know that like f- like apparently like a superstar in basketball yeah he is can nice sing, he, I, can I, dance can rap like apparently there's just so many different things he does at such a high level that i think if you stacked him up against michael technically he's uh more talented but yeah, it's almost the like the michael jordan lebron debate yeah kind of like, like lebron is good yeah, well, LeBron is good at so many things on the basketball court. Mm-hmm. But, like, being a winner, Michael is just above Got him. it. So, yep. it's like, yeah, he's good at a lot of things. Like, it's almost like you'd rather be a master of something or a jack of all trades. It's like... Right. And also... That's why I would always Chris give... Like, I would give Michael Jackson that nod just because, like, all right, maybe he... he I mean, dude, I think he's a better dancer, but... It's, it was a one type of dance, right? It's not like Chris Brown that's like good at every kind of genre. Um, yeah. But I feel when it came to just being like the nut, like being the pop star that you're looking like, that's Michael Jackson, bro. Like mm-hmm. the mass appeal, right? The mass appeal, the dancing, the singing. This motherfucker was on the Free Willy soundtrack, bro. Like yeah. that's how good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what it is. It's like Chris Brown doesn't really have. Uh, those like change the world type songs. No. I that, mean, I like, guess the closest thing he did was that Benny Benassi's beat. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, right? What was that? Damn, I fucking. You know what I'm talking about, that, right? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about, and that kind of popped in my head. Um, let me look it up. 
Wait, is it? Oh, beautiful people. Yeah, beautiful people. Yeah, like shit like that. If he, if that was what he was known for, then right. maybe. Right, but when there's like you have like one of those, and then like the most of your things are just made for your apparently your seventy five thousand fans. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, like I don't know, like it's hard to make that comparison, bro. But right. like, I know why they make it. I know why they make it. It's just like it's hard to support it for me when I'm like, I don't know, bro. I feel like if Michael Jackson announced something the same day, that's just doing more than seventy five thousand fucking streams. Like that's oh, yeah. just that's just my opinion. Yeah, but I think like people would argue. I think we may have said this with the the Drake thing, but like Michael Jackson is like at least for this era, I think the most famous person or like we've recognizable ever seen. person. Like we've ever seen. Everyone's heard of him. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. dude. Like, the, the, like, I know it's again, it's different eras, but like. This motherfucker will open his balcony door and like millions of people flock just to see a glimmer in the room. Yeah. Like, you know, like people, they're used to, they're, people are just dapping Drake up at a club and keeping it moving. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so like, yeah. it's, you know, it's just different times. But again, I, I, I just quickly comment on the music. I actually enjoyed the album. Um, There's like four or five songs that I actually would replay again at the gym. So again, I don't think it was bad by any point, but I actually enjoyed the 5 year four. And I'm like, I gotta tell you, like, I'm so over these fucking drill beats. Like, it's, it's, dude. Like, I just need the next genre of hip hop to come already, bro. Because uh -huh. I'm like, just so over this shit. Yeah. But that was, that was actually a good song with him. So yeah, I think, I think it was a good album, bro. But uh, I, I just don't think any of this stuff like really stacks up to even some of Chris Brown's best stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, it's just making me think like, are all these guys just like trying to wrap up the record deal and just like move on to the next thing? And like, I don't, I don't know. You just feel like so like unenthusiastically like, yo, here bro and i'm just like as a fan like if i'm a if again i don't know if you are but yeah you know, if i'm a die hard post malona chris brown fan like i don't i'm not mad at the label bro i'm mad at you because mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're putting like you're saying that this is your content and you're okay with these 20 mediocre songs and like i don't know bro that that really rubs me the wrong way yeah I will say I definitely enjoyed this more than Post. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Post for sure. I was like, just saying, like, just, yeah. like, the numbers being so low. That's for sure. Um, and I can't even say that I necessarily have a body of work from Chris that I like. I think he's one of those artists where I tend to only... I don't know if it's with R&B or what, but I tend to only pick and choose, like... The hits? The, the hits. And yeah. then that kind of satisfies me, satisfies me enough. Um... Like I mentioned, I'm not really into the super, like, softer baby. Yeah, because 60% of the album is that. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, Corey, for instance, my brother, like, he he loves R&B more than I do. So mm. I'm curious what he would think. But that's yeah. just not really my taste. I like the, I don't know if you call it trap R&B or party R&B, but the stuff he did with Young Thug and 5 year Foreign, like, that's the pocket that I like the most. Um, yeah. Just catchy, fun stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess we'll see. Like I've realized over time, I know if I really like an album, if I revisit it, cause there's some that I would play and like for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then three months later, like I don't revisit one song from it. And you're like, like how oh, impactful was really was this? Yeah. 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 yeah so that's also that's a good point. I'm actually intrigued about that for honestly, never mind, because first week and a half in. I think it's been two weeks now, actually. Bro, nonstop, right? But I just started feeling a little bit tired of it, like, yesterday on my way to work. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give this shit a break. So mm -hmm. I am interested, like, yo, next time I'm out, you know, am I gonna be like, yo, let's put that shit on real quick. Um, but yeah, dude, honestly, that's what I've been doing recently, bro, because just, like, going to, like, old catalogs and shit. Like, just putting in an artist and, like, going through their old shit, and let's just mm -hmm. play that, because, like, Again, I don't know what it is right now, but like nothing is really moving me to like peep this shit over and over. Like it's not. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just not. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if it's a me thing, but mm. like, bro, like I'm just like, again, and I, I, I we saw the Kendrick, I shared the, the Kendrick Lamar thing with you for at Louis Vuitton, mm -hmm. uh, the fashion week, like that dude, that was fire. Like him sitting and just spitting bars to uh, N95 it was phenomenal. Like, yeah. phenomenal. But, like, even that album, bro, I'm like, man, like, not, but I feel like that was a little caveat. That one is great music. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to listen to that shit when I'm trying to be out here this summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. I just don't. Like, Yeah. No, I 100% agree with you. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, summer is right around the corner. I feel like, I mean, all the goats pretty much have dropped something at this point. I can't imagine we'll get anything like. Yeah, I mean, apparently we're getting a Kanye, Cardi B, and Lil Durk song on Friday. And I told you immediately, this is going to be average, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, no, like, like, and, yeah. I, and I feel like I, I stand by that, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't. It's, I, I, I should be hyped for that. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, bro, like, it's going to be whatever. So like, I'm curious, is, and I agree with your assessment, but I'm curious why. And I'm going to tell you what I, how I felt was when I saw the picture, it just seemed like a very forced, curated uh, assembly of artists. Yeah. Like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, this okay. doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. why why are we doing this? Like, yeah. like maybe Little Dirk and, and, uh, and Cardi. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, like, at, at, dude, at my point, it's also like, it's weird. Cause it's how I felt when like, um, random throwback. But like when uh, when Wale signed to like uh, Maybach Music mm-hmm. with like Rick Ross and like I'm like okay and Rick Ross is a goat like great, but I was like Wale well, like you don't really go with that bro like why would you do this right. so like same with Kanye bro I'm like and and he doesn't go with that with them for multiple reasons bro like you are the top of the top when it comes to fucking hip hop like music royalty bro why are you making a song with these people like I don't know and yeah. that that's they that might sound terrible. But like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, again, Kanye is too good at times to just be giving anyone a fucking feature. Like, mm-hmm. no, I 100% agree. Hopefully they... they yeah, hopefully uh, it slaps, bro. Like, hopefully yeah. it slaps. Like, again, we, we thought g Easy and Cardi B and ASAP would never make sense. And that was a fucking banger. Like, that's probably mm-hmm. a, a timeless banger in it right there. But yeah, I don't know, bro. And also might be... Maybe it's more because I don't really fuck with Dirk anymore. I've also realized. Like, he really had me, bro, for like six months in uh-huh. the summer of 2020. Like that song with I tell you that song with Drake, that song with Nas. Yeah. I was like, all right, bro, those guys fucking the next artist. Like, and now I'm like, bro, this is what you like, yo, you're always like crying on a fucking like I don't know, bro. Like it's just <laughs> I feel like the mystique for some of these guys is like disappearing. I mean, I felt feel the same way about Lil Baby that I've Oh yeah, felt. bro. Talk about the yo, we can talk about that. Cause like he's like under the radar. It, like every Friday, there's like a new single or feature from him on Apple Music. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, this ain't it, bro. Yeah. Like, so yeah, dude, this is a weird time in music right now. I don't know if everyone's like flustered um, with the whole YSL shit, you know, just, I don't know. But it feels like a very weird time that like, there's really, besides Kendrick, like no inspiring fucking music coming out. I, I actually, and that's me my heat of the week, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed the, uh, the Pharrell and Tyler and 21 song. Like that felt nuanced, new. It's like, that was cool. But for the most part, yeah. bro, there's really nothing that's getting me fucking, which is why we have to try to do more interviews when like, we get back on because we get, I feel like it's on us to go find those artists, bro. Uh, yeah. That's a good more point. than ever, I'm motivated to go find that next yeah. sound because <laughs> damn, dude, whatever we're getting right now, like that shit ain't it. And that's what's been sad is I've been thinking about that too. I've been going through the Spotify new music stuff i'm like please let there just be some new artists that like i'm gonna show danny and we're gonna be excited to talk to and even then i'm like not coming across shit yeah dude uh, i think it's just also like a weird time because like you see what's successful and it really is those tiktok only songs but like mm-hmm. if you're not that kind of artist even though you're super talented that may not feel comfortable for you so yeah you know how to do it but like if, if you don't believe in it that's just never gonna hit you know right so I think yeah. the only other person I, I can think of that hasn't dropped that I'm looking forward to is Travis. I don't want to keep my expectations too high, but obviously it's not going to be the most inspiring, deep, thoughtful music, but hopefully it's a vibe enough to like make up for the lack of anything really substance yeah. or not sub non-substance. And good for, I think it's the day, whatever Vegas uh festival he's oh, like yeah, headlining yeah. one of the nights so good for them you know definitely quicker than i ever thought it'd be but even with him bro like yeah i'm i'm excited you know I, i'm a travis fan so like i i told you when i listened to um astral world dude literally changed like phenomenal right but after what happened similar to like my justin bieber take from a few months like a few like a few months ago it's like bro you've been through a lot talk about it so like mm-hmm. this is my I'm I'm probably gonna enjoy what I hear on the Travis Utopia yeah. album, but be like, bro, 
you could have spoken about so much other shit and just mm-hmm. kept it to the same generic Travis Scott thing. Again, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna try my best to not and give it a true, you know, critique. But like, I feel like I already know myself. Like, no, oh, that's it. Like, that's yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking about a little bit. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? like, yeah, there might be like one or two lines. I don't see him doing like half a song or even a no, no. Nah, nah. Say some shit like, oh, they try to get rid of me or something, but like not really address it. No, he's all. not. Yeah, he's not taking deep dives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, to our point earlier, check out the Chris Brown album. Uh, and again, hopefully that song with uh, with Lil Durk, Cardi B, and Kanye hits. Um, before we get out of here and jump into heat of the week, uh, let the people know. So Stephen Jackson, I think, went to O Block in Chicago, yeah. Yeah, and this is a big deal. Just to catch people up, Stephen Jackson is a uh, NBA champion, um, veteran, or already retired, having like a, thir- a, a pretty long career. Currently has a very successful podcast called All, All the Smoke uh, with Matt Barnes, another famous NBA player, uh, also retired. So yeah, and then let the people know what happened when he went to visit O-Block. Yeah, he just basically visited O-Block, uh, turned on By Instagram. I, I believe so. But yeah, he was just posted up with a few goons at night, just talking to the camera like, yeah, nigga, I'm at O Block, like hanging out with the real ones. Like, you can't do this unless you check in. Like, I'm really out here. But like nothing else. And I'm just like, why is this? How long was the video? Like 10 seconds? No, this shit was like a whole minute long. But he was just repeating himself like, look at me. I'm, I'm cool. I'm with goons in like this famous location in Chirac. But... There wasn't any substance to what he was saying. It wasn't like he oh, was I'm like interviewing people or some shit. Like, yeah, hey, he just was just there. like, look at me. I'm hard. I'm a millionaire, but I'm still, you know, in the trenches. And I just thought it was funny and obviously a bad example for terrible anyone, example, but, bro. Yeah, terrible dude. Like, yo, all the smoke podcast is one of the most successful podcasts in all of like the podcast world. So you would think that's enough. To scratch whatever itch you have of like, look at me, look at me. Right. That's why. That's all it was. Is him one minute posted up, just talking shit. Basically, he didn't. There was, also, I don't also even know why he was out there. Shit, like, yeah. And he wasn't. Um, he wasn't. You know, saying, "Oh, he's uh, like throwing rest in peace, King Bond and stuff," as if he knows anything about, you know, his legacy. Uh, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of like a clout chasey. Yeah. Moment. And I think a lot of artists in general come up and it kind of perpetuates perpetuates this idea that, like we were talking about earlier, you always got to be on the block and in the hood with no security and just be vulnerable to look cool. But then if his ass got shot two hours later. What the fuck you do in an old block? Yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. Are you like- exactly. Oh, uh, man. It, was just, it was funny to me just looking at it. It was cringy too because he's he's like way older. So my dog, this guy's a forty five year old man. Mm-hmm. Forty five like grown ass man. man. Yep. Damn, that's so that's so ridiculous, dude. Like it's sad though, right? Because it's that saying. I mean, we spoke about it, like, dude, like, like you could be the richest person in the world and still feel like you don't have your shit together, right? Because like mm. on paper, this guy successful NBA career made millions. Productive post NBA career making millions in a podcast. You would think your life is set, bro. Mm-hmm. And then you're doing shit like this just to be seen. Where really, like, who gives a fuck if anyone sees you, dude? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that's the, that's the weird part, bro. Like, who cares if anyone sees you? Right. If you're, like, I, I, that, that, again, the people, millionaires and billionaires still commit suicide, right? Because they don't, they're still craving attention or still craving something that, that the money can't buy them. But yeah. It just seems odd that like that's something that a grown ass man who's a mm-hmm. yeah that has money in the bank would even worry about, bro. Like, I feel like I don't know. Pride is so self destructive because I can imagine a lot of these rappers like no matter how much money they make and stuff, like the last thing when they want to do is feel soft. And yeah. Any opportunity to align themselves with like a real one or a killer or whatever, just by association, you already get like cool points. But I don't think they're thinking about the fact they could end up getting shot or potentially getting some other beef. What if, like, fucking the GDs or whoever O Block's enemy is catch him at some fucking pizza shop or something? And they're like, oh, yeah, they don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, Rest in peace, King Von, right? Yeah, yeah. Fucking just take his ass down or something. Like King Von killed my brother or whatever the case yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, dude. And involved in this shit for no fucking reason. Yeah. For like a little segment on their podcast, which again, much bigger than ours. So this is your content development. I mean, I guess kudos to you, but it just seems odd that that's mm-hmm. like, yeah, dude. It's always weird as we get older, right? Like, do you think like we're going to start moving differently? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I moved differently than I, when I did like 10 years ago, right? Like mm-hmm. the idea of getting belligerently drunk on a Thursday night seems ridiculous to me. Mm-hmm. Where I, I don't know, but like, I don't know, man. It's just weird. Like, because like at some point, like when do you become the old man? And like, I feel like that's like also like maybe like a midlife crisis by him. Like, oh, I'm so young. I can be out here doing She's like, no, oh, you probably should be at home with your family. Like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, yeah, just an odd look overall, bro. Just overall. Yeah. I mean, recent history for me would say getting belligerently drunk on a Thursday was on my agenda. Can't say that would be on my agenda moving forward. Right. I did find myself, uh, I didn't like different spots that people would recommend. Like if I knew it was kind of a hood spot, I would be like, no, I'm good. Mm. Or as soon as the club ended, I'm like, we got to leave. I vividly remember one of the clubs when it was over. Uh, we were kind of all standing around and I, my brother, my friend said to me like, yo, this is like exactly the moment when like a random nigga starts shooting because he, someone stepped on his shoe or some shit. Oh and I was my like, God. oh, yeah, right. So then I called my Uber and I was like, yo, we got to get out of here. Like, because I just felt like it could happen because we we're just a hundred people standing around drunk. Like, that's a disaster. That's a disaster, bro. hundred yeah. percent. Like, no, you guys are lot. You're like, you're lacking. Like, yeah. at that moment, you were lacking anything. Like, common mm-hmm. sense. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. Like, yeah. we all, I get, Again, we'll all move differently. But again, there's there's some people who are just, you know, they're they're so rich, but all they have is money. Like, they don't have common sense. Everyone's going through some shit. So, again, yeah. shout out to all the Smoke Hot podcasts. Uh, everyone stay safe out there. But again, I, I, for me, I think for this, it just seemed like a very weird move by someone who should be above cloud chasing but 100%. it is what it is bro but uh all right bro before we get out of here episode 113 the books uh your heat of the week before we get to the week hiatus my heat of the week um by a long shot is catch a body by chris brown featuring oh. five year foreign um when i heard, first heard this song in the background like i was doing something and listening to the album for some reason i was like this is cool but it it uh it wasn't something i wanted to immediately repeat and then as time went on, I went back to the, the album and fell in love with that song. I think what I like about it is it's a unique sound because it's like a drill r and mm-hmm. beat. Uh, I thought 5 year Foreign did his thing. He's, he did his thing. I get yeah. it. He did his thing. Amazing. Easily my favorite drill rapper at this point now that I've gotten to, to know more of his music. Chris Brown obviously delivered. I love the, the little ad lib he has in the back where he's like, party. I think that's what got me, um, the ad libs. And I, I saw a lot of YouTube reactions and the, everyone falls in love with that part of it. Um, nice. The video is insane. It's super trippy and like just fun. Um, went hand in hand with my my week in LA. Like it just put me in a good mood. Nice. And everybody nice, nice, nice. And, and going out for drinks and dancing and stuff. So Right, because you ended up having two full weekends out in LA, right? You didn't just... Mm-hmm. Nice, yeah, two nice. full that's weekends. Awesome. Uh I don't think I would have survived a third. So, yeah, definitely the right amount of time. But, yeah, I think the song is just great. It's one of the few times where I also get a song I love that isn't, like, only two minutes long and I got to replay it a thousand times. This shit is, like, five minutes long. Yeah, so. I would say, actually, in this album, most songs aren't time short at all. Mm-hmm. Most songs are, like, the, the normal, like, three verses. Yeah, which makes me think he doesn't give a fuck about the, the stream. He doesn't numbers. give a fuck. But then, no, I, but then, like, yo, you're only putting out 20 songs if you want your streaming numbers right. to do better. Like, that's, yeah, that's true. That's my conundrum. It's like, yeah. Uh, but no, that is a good song. So I'll definitely add that to the playlist. For me, uh, which I promised I would do, I checked out the More Black Superheroes album by West Side Boogie. Nice. Really fucking enjoyed that shit. So before I give my heat of the week, bro, he has a song with Soulja Boy called Can't Even Lie. Uh-huh. And dude, how we take Soulja Boy serious is beyond me, bro. Because, <laughs> yo, his lyrics on this song are uh-huh. horrendous, bro. And, like, everything is just him shooting someone every five seconds. 
like, I got like my the strap. lyrics, oh. the lyrics, the lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> I got my strap, blah, blah, blah. and then I clock back. The and it's like, bro, like, no, you didn't. And then talk <laughs> about something else, bro. Like, yeah. or say it like, in a fucking clever way. Like, yo, yeah. like just wasting my fucking time, bro. But <laughs> besides that, the I highly so recommend you haven't it. yet. What was that? I said so. the The song title is is bad. He could lie. Yeah, he he's could lying lie the whole time. Yeah, he's lying the whole time. He's lying the whole fucking time. Well, well, well done, sir. Uh, peep the fucking album, though, man. Like, really, really creative. I love when you like get these cohesive albums from like young artists who like clearly get it, like the art behind it. This isn't just like someone like hop on a beat because mm-hmm. they want to just become a famous rapper. Like, it's yeah. someone who like actually you know enjoys their craft. So I got that a lot throughout the album. Um, but yeah, for me, it was nonchalant. Um, track three, dude, highly enjoyed it. Good message, good story behind it. So yeah, peep. Um, but if you haven't yet, peep nonchalant by uh, West Side Boogie. And I. Cool. Sorry, you yeah, it froze for like person. one second. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not <laughs> enough to to edit the video no. out, but we're good. <laughs> cool. You guys gotta, you can screenshot our faces if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. So that's it. Let the people know where they can uh, peep the merch, peep some episodes while we're out for a couple weeks. Yes, sir. Check us out at audio theory.com. We have everything on the site merch, uh, Spotify, and Apple Music playlists. Um, we also have. Uh, these episodes on every single platform so you can never miss us but don't forget to like share subscribe do everything you can to support the channel also check us out on tiktok i believe we have the link on there as well yeah we're going to be more active on there um so you can see our hot takes from all these episodes in case they're too long for you which they shouldn't be but (laughs) if you prefer prefer short uh form content or you got adhd or some shit go to tiktok Absolutely. Yeah, we're definitely posting more there. Um, yeah, we're going to take a little two-week hiatus, enjoy some summertime in Italy. Um, obviously, God willing, I come back uh, safe and tan and not not the pasta. Um, <laughs> we'll also use that time we're away to just uh, reach out to some artists who we're trying to have on the pod before the summer's up. So hopefully sure. in August, we should have a couple more interviews for you guys to enjoy. But uh, my brother, I love you. Glad you're home safe. Enjoy love the move. Too. And uh, obviously, we'll talk before I leave. Yeah, enjoy your trip. Peace. Later, brother. Peace. Thank you.